I book to get zany. So I am, of course, a book lover. And as a book lover, I love not only the contents of books, but also the physical book itself. And so over the last couple of years, it's been a bit of a journey for me to explore how we talk about the physical book. And I wanted to share today some of the vocabulary that I've come across in my exploration. So when we pick up a physical book, let's say it's what we call a hardcover like this, most of us know that it usually has a dust jacket. Dust jacket just like this, usually paper, this one happens to be wrapped in a protective plastic. The dust jacket is sometimes called a dust wrapper and the origin of the dust jacket actually dates back to the 1830s. And originally the dust jacket was not meant to be kept, which is why books that are more than 40 or 50 years old are often missing their dust jacket when we come across them secondhand, simply because the dust jacket was considered what we would call ephemera something that would be thrown away once you got the book home. The dust jacket was meant to protect the cloth boards underneath. And so if this were an older book, say in the 1830s, if it was bound in cloth, you would take it home, you would throw this away, and you would put your pristine cloth bound book on the shelf. It was meant to keep the cloth in good condition from the moment it was created by the printer to the moment it reaches the reader, the buyer's house. But now, of course, the dust jacket has evolved and dust jackets contain all sorts of information. We have the author, the title. Sometimes we have a photograph of the author and a mini biography of the author on the back. Over the centuries, over the decades, dust jackets have evolved to be an integral part of the book. They've evolved to be aesthetically pleasing, to provide us with information. And now, of course, we keep them. And so we can pick up a physical book and we can talk about the dust jacket. But what do we do if we're picking up a paperback instead as things go flying? Picking up a paperback instead. So we have here, for instance, The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka in a Penguin paperback edition. Now, most of us and me for a large part would pick this up and say, oh, yeah, you know, there's the title, author cute little penguin on the cover. But in fact, there is another piece of vocabulary to help us talk about this paperback book. The covers of the book, so this protective thick card paper spine uh, and the front and back covers can in fact be called a wrapper. And paperbacks, wrappers, actually have a similar origin to that of the dust jacket. So paperbacks way back in the day were originally sold as something that was meant to be purchased by the reader and taken to a book binder and bound perhaps in leather or something aesthetically pleasing for your own library. And the paper wrapper was really just meant to protect the text block, which is all the pages in here. This is the text block. To protect the text block until the buyer of the book could take it and have it bound. Now, of course, our idea of a paperback has evolved to the point where we buy a paperback as a cheaper option than a hardcover. And once again, the wrappers are made pleasing to the eye. They provide us with all, with all sorts of information. This one, not so much. We have a very tiny synopsis. We have, you know, the price, barcodes, indication of who the publisher is. But just like the hardbacks, the wrapper of a paperback was originally not meant to be kept. Now, of course, it is. And so now we can talk about dust jackets and wrappers. But what about when you take the dust jacket 
off of a hardback book. Well, we can look at it and we can say that this one is cloth bound. A lot of modern hardbacks don't have cloth at all, but are rather cardboard with paper. Uh, so I guess we could call those paper bound. But whether they're cloth bound or paper bound, or you've bought some luxury leather bound book, you can talk about the board. So we have the front board here, and we have the back board, and we of course have the spine. Then if you turn the book, this here is the fore edge. And if you turn it here to the top of the book, you could call this the top edge or the head of the book. Some books have what we call a headband and some occasionally have a footband. So if we look at my Everyman's Library edition of The Three Musketeers, you can see this little blue band right here at the top of the book. And there's a footband, a blue footband at the bottom as well. Maybe I'll take off the dust jacket so you can see better. So there is a footband and what we call a headband. And the headband is a piece of fabric, sometimes leather, sometimes string, silk. It can be really made of anything. But initially it was an integral part of the binding. And so in the binding process, the string is the cords that were holding the pages into the spine would be run through the headband. Now, what you can't quite see here is that the bands on this book are just for decoration. They are quite literally glued to the tops of the pages. And because binding practices have changed and headbands are just decorative, many books don't in fact have them. So for instance, this 1948 edition of Hugh McLean's The Precipice has no headband. As you can see, it's just the spine and the pages. No headband at all, no decorative headband. So that's some of the basic vocabulary that we can use to talk about books. We can talk about dust jackets or dust wrappers, which are the same thing. Wrappers when it's a paperback, four edges, boards and headbands, and occasionally end bands. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below and perhaps I'll make some more on the vocabulary that we can use to talk about books.